this is Leanne from Not Your Average Boot Camp, and I'm coming to you today directly from my pool, actually. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this week I herniated a disc in my lumbar spine, and I'm not moving very quickly, let's put it that way. So I'm just getting into my pool to decompress a little bit, and I have to say it feels pretty wonderful. Anyways, I wanted to talk to you guys today about scale weight and how to monitor your fitness using your weight. A lot of people are kind of obsessed with the scale, and that's totally understandable because it's an immediate way to measure progress. We can get on and, and see a certain weight and know if we're more or less than the day before. But the thing is, the, the scale weight can be really tricky and deceitful, actually, um, and we're going to talk about why. The reason I decided to talk about this today is because I'm actually experiencing some scale woes myself. You see, being injured and not being able to work out like I usually am, I've actually shown my scale weight to go down while my body fat percentage has gone up a little bit. Okay, So people always assume that if they're losing weight or possibly gaining weight on the scale, that their fitness and their body composition can be directly reflected from this. But I wanted to point out a couple of things. If you are partaking in a resistance training program, I want to remind you that if you are gaining muscle, muscle and losing fat, you might show that the scale is not moving. You might even find in the first um, you know, few weeks up to maybe even 16 weeks of your uh, resistance training program, due to neural adaptations, you might um, be actually gaining a little bit of weight. It's just your nervous system responding to the exercise that it has not really seen either ever or in a very long time. Um, the second of which is there's a myth out there that muscle weighs more than, than fat. Um, and that's not true. A pound is a pound no matter how you cut the cake. Um, a, let's say a pound of cake, for example, would be a pound just like a pound of feathers would be a pound. But the thing is, is muscle is actually a little bit, a lot denser, okay? So if you had a pound of fat um, versus a pound of muscle, the pound of muscle would be a lot smaller, a lot more condensed than the pound of fat, okay? I also wanted to remind you that, it, like I said, if you're partaking in a resistance training program, you can gain a pound of muscle, lose a pound of fat, and the scale doesn't budge. But people look at the scale and they say, whoa, it hasn't even moved, I must not be losing weight, and they think that what they're doing isn't, isn't working, and they either try something else or they stop altogether. So the problem lies in terms of progress, you need to make sure that you're measuring in a few different ways. You need to be partake, obviously the scale is a good indicator, but you should also you just use your clothes as an indicator. See if your pants are feeling a little tighter. If, you're, if your buttons aren't, aren't pulling so much on your blouses. Um, if your belt, you have to go down to the next hole, things like that, okay? Also, you definitely wanna keep your circumference and girth measurements handy, okay? Um, that's definitely a sign, a, a way to tell, and if you are you know, short on time or you don't have someone to measure you, um, just taking your hips, waist, and abdomen uh, measurements is just a, a great indicator. Um, after all, your waist girth is what sh is what is a um, an indicator of obesity or cardiovascular disease. So that's another thing. Also, it would be helpful if you take your body fat percentage. Now, keep in mind, based on the um, availabilities that we have to take our body fat, you know, from hydro hydrostatic weighing, obviously, um, or displacement is obviously the gold standard in our industry, but there's um, calipers and there's some of those little body composition readers that you hold onto the handles. And those, keep in mind, they're not gonna tell you, okay, this is your exact body fat. They're not 100% accurate in that. They can be up to, you know, even up to 10% off some of them. But if you're constantly and consistently using them, the same person is taking your body fat every time and you're doing it from month to month, it's definitely a way to show progress. So don't get obsessed, just like the scale, don't get obsessed with the actual number of what your body fat says. Just use it as an indicator of change. And keep in mind, especially with those calipers, you're judging in terms of little teeny millimeters. So, you know, it could vary from user to user. So that's why I stress having the same person take your body fat every time. Um, between those other indicators besides the scale, you can really get an, in, uh, a, an idea of how you're doing physically. Another thing, obviously, first and foremost, measure your ability, measure your fitness, measure if you get as winded going up a flight of stairs or if you decrease the time of your mile and a half run or whatever it is, use your physical abilities to monitor progress. So I hope this helped guys and I hope that you, um, for those of you who are getting discouraged by the scale, you'll look to other methods to, to figure out if you're doing well on your exercise and in, in a nutritional program. So good luck to you guys and I'll see you next time.